very supportive of our military troops and our military intelligence and our president who has the background, and not just of a military background, yeah. but of an intelligence, intelligence background. Intelligence background, and this is more important. The future the now is, yeah. is not into military attacks, yeah. but it's an intelligent attack. And I, I really do respect and use the words of um, pri um, UK Prime Minister David Cameron when he said, when it comes to the national security of the UK. Red line. Uh, Ambassador Hegazi, uh, you've mentioned the ideology of terrorism and how fighting terrorism should depend on many things and on many issues, most uh, important of which to fight the ideology itself, not, not the, the attacks which are taking place on the ground or the, uh, the militants which, or the mercenaries. I, by the way, I, I call them mercenaries more than anything else because they are paid to fight. Um, his, um, Al Imam Al Akbar, Grand Imam of Al Azhar Sheikh Ahmed Al Tayyib, when he was in Indonesia and when he uh, was in Nigeria, he put those things. Uh, included or highlighted into his speeches. How do you see the role of Al-Azhar as uh, the most important Sunni Islamic uh, institute to differentiate between Islam as a religion and what's going on under the slogan, unfortunately, of Islam? Uh, defeating terrorism uh, through uh, diffusing the uh, messages and the wrong interpretation or, uh, and also confronting the Western views on relating terrorism to a particular religion. There is no religion mm -hmm. that calls uh, for killing or massacring people. Those yeah. who are doing this are terrorists and they are condemned all over <coughs> and in all culture and religions. Yeah. Uh, besides the two important visits you have mentioned to the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar, Sheikh Ahmed al Tayyib, to Indonesia and to Nigeria, he visited Germany as well and mm -hmm. in the Bundestag, the Bundestag. German parliament, yeah. he gave a very illuminating speech and yes. he gave the clear message that Islam uh, condemn terrorism. Islam is a message of tolerance and I think this message was well received and he answered all the questions that can come to any Western mind about Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've been uh, founder uh, of uh, civilization and we still is mm -hmm. and we will continue to be and I'm sure that uh, visits of this nature of the Mufti uh, uh, as well as the Grand Imam uh, to different parts of the world uh, will uh, help uh, confronting this message, will diffuse the message and the basic uh, 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 messages of terrorist uh, groups as well as uh, supporting <coughs> the true message of moderate Islam which is the true essence mm -hmm. of Islam is moderation which is uh, uh, stipulated in our holy book and is uh, pro uh, proclaimed by all of us and uh, defended by Al-Azhar as the oldest uh, uh, institution who is dealing uh, with this very important <coughs> subject. I think more understanding is coming. We are not only uh, dealing with the West, we are facing our own communities because mm -hmm. we don't have a problem only with the West. We have a problem within our communities sure. and we have to diffuse uh, the arguments, the wrong arguments that is uh, proclaimed by the uh, groups and the radical thoughts mm -hmm. to deal with radicalism and to deal with terrorism as we mentioned in my uh, previous answer on uh, peace and uh, <coughs> security or defense and uh, military uh, tools development and economy uh, ideological confrontation as we've been just uh, seeing in the security council very important statement after the special session Egypt called Headed for. By, uh, and I have to refer government. to another uh, very important two dimensions. Mm -hmm. One is curbing on finance. Mm -hmm. Those who support terrorism and using groups of radical thoughts to achieve political goals, being it political entities or countries who are supplying routes as well as finance. So this is a very important uh, uh, issue that the Security Council UN Security Council has established uh, uh, very important resolutions, so we have all to <coughs> adhere to that, and most importantly, mm -hmm. and that might lead us to another uh, uh, question, uh, the root causes, the political causes that cause uh, uh, tension and frustration among youth 
and can be used like the Palestinian question. Mm -hmm. And you may understand why President Sisi have launched the uh, day before yesterday in Asyut uh, his very important initiative for the parties uh, to find a way out to mm -hmm. and to uh, get a solution that will observe the two-state solution and move us forward to a new era of peace which has proven successful uh, between Egypt uh, and Israel. So those are the most important elements. Terrorism is a multi-layer phenomenon yeah. that has to be dealt with with a, a, a multi-faceted uh, strategy, including uh, the ideological In confrontation. In fact, sir, this episode of Windows <coughs> was assigned to discuss the two speeches by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi during the uh, inauguration of uh, us youth projects and the speech of a Grand Imam of Al-Azhar in Nigeria, but unfortunately after the, uh, the uh, latest developments we've moved to uh, uh, the other issue we are discussing now. But uh, let me take it from here and to speak with you, uh, Dr. Uh, Ibrahim, about this initiative by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and how he was that uh, smart and logic in the same time to uh, speak about this war while he was uh, inaugurating projects uh, as if he is saying that fighting terrorism should be uh, through both of them development and in the same time putting a peaceful solution to the Middle East crises on top of which is the Palestinian one if you may elaborate on that sir well first of all I have to admit that uh, the message uh, embedded on it a message of peace mm -hmm. because we need peace as a nation security wise although the, the outer picture gives you the impression that we are um, you know uh, mobilizing our military resources but that's another uh, message that is given by uh, president sisi mm -hmm. that we are seeking peace in the area not just uh, in uh, egypt but we are seeking peace in the area because that tends to relax foreign direct investment mm -hmm. and gives more uh, initiative and more motivations for more uh, foreign uh, investments to pour into Egypt. Mm -hmm. So although, yes, it was a ceremony to open uh, mega projects, uh, whether electrical mega projects or housing mega projects, but it's also a message to our neighbors that we are not uh, a military uh, intervening kind of uh, country, although we are supporting uh, the, uh, the peace and the, and the security of Libya. Mm -hmm. So my, my, my main idea here is that the president was giving the hints mm -hmm. to the Israelis that we are not seeking any kind of a regional power uh, as it could be a conspiracy from the Israelis. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's a very well timed at a time where we are seeking more direct investment into each. Because if you look at the economic picture in Egypt now, although the government is doing at least it's best to meet the constitution and the minimum requirement of the budget mm -hmm. but we still need a lot of foreign direct investment and the only way foreign direct investment will come if there is stability inside as well as around egypt so yeah. again I, I applaud for 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 such a message at that time but um, your mission mm -hmm. at the parliament is to ratify those laws to be implemented on the ground and then to give us the chance to move forward uh, I have to correct you, if you don't mind. <laughs> sure. <laughs> our role is to uh, put the legislations yeah. and to monitor. Okay. But our, no is, our role is not to uh, execute. That's the executive arm. Sure. So we not are giving execute, already. But to, yeah, okay. we are giving uh, the red signals already, as I am a member of the Education Committee, that uh, the budget presented by the minister is not meeting the minimum requirement of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's our role. They have to come back with, uh, with either a rationale why they are not meeting, or they have to meet what the Constitution have uh, really uh, enacted on it. Yeah. Four percent for education, two percent for higher education, three percent for health, and one percent for uh, research. Yeah, this is democracy. Uh, Dr. Hagazi, you have mentioned the ways to combat terrorism, but. If I'm going to speak uh, from a broader spectrum, you would find uh, so many uh, groups who are calling themselves uh, rebels, I call them militants. The so-called <coughs> Front, the so-called Boko Haram, the so-called I don't know free army of who, you know, I think that they are all 
uh, just faces of the same coin, terrorism. Do you find any kind of differences or they are all the same? No, I s subscribe to what you have said. Uh, <coughs> I mean, definitely they are all of the same uh, nature. It's all radical groups with different names. Mm -hmm. They are all interrelated. They are all linked. Uh, it's a network mm -hmm. that requires to confront a uh, united, integrated strategy. And this is why we called last week uh, uh, on the Security Council for a collective uh, strategy to confront terrorism, including the ideology which is spread through uh, social media and through uh, different uh, uh, tools, and we together can mm -hmm. confront what has proven to be a threat to the nation state in our region, to the world security, peace and stability. Mm -hmm. So time has come that all refrain from looking softly or supporting even uh, this uh, phenomena and deal with it with firmness, uh, with transparency, and with no selectiveness. I think Amen if we... to that. But this is, in theory, great. But on the ground in Syria, for example, <coughs> how I can differentiate between the so-called armed opposition and Daesh? No, I think there is a, a clear difference in everybody's mind about the Syrian opposition. Uh, no, on the ground, sir. On the ground. <coughs> uh, and Daesh and al-Nusra. Daesh and al-Nusra mm -hmm. are very well, uh, very well defined by Security Council resolution and by the consensus of the world community that they are terrorists. Of course, we can differ on uh, uh, calling for, as Minister Samah Shukri always uh, proclaimed, Egyptian position is to call for a political solution and arming uh, the opposition uh, uh, the Syrian opposition mm -hmm. to attain their political goals. We are all of a uh, united uh, uh, Syria uh, that is looking for a, a better future with uh, pre uh, respect to its sovereignty, uh, but uh, definitely among uh, the Syrian opposition, uh, those who are uh, well defined as terrorists like Daesh, who kills uh, more uh, Syrians than anybody or Iraqis mm -hmm. uh, or here in uh, Egypt or elsewhere are, uh, are groups that has to be confronted firmly and eradicated to have uh, our Syria back and to have our region stable. Uh, since we have, uh, we have uh, 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 spoken about the regional issues, let me move with you, Dr. Uh, Ibrahim, to Yemen, for example, because this is another symbol. Um, do you consider the Houthis militants or rebels? First, uh, I don't consider them either or. I consider them as used by somebody else. Okay. And 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 you can if, if you I've been to my main Yemen question several is times. should I consider them as a part of the solution and to award them for what they have done to Yemen and for capturing Sana'a in September 20. 14 till the moment uh, and to uh, uh, integrate them into the Kuwait talks which ended in vain unfortunately who was paying the price isn't it the Yemeni people it is okay then what we should do who first the Arabs second the Arab League third Egypt as a part of the Arab nation First of all, you have to know that uh, we as a parliamentary and parliament have approved the extension of our military troops in, uh, in Yemen. Yemen. For one year. Uh, uh, yeah, for, for, for one, another year. For one another year. Which yes. means that we are in full support of the unity of Yemen. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the threat is not coming from Saudi Arabia and it's sure. not coming from Egypt. Yeah. The threat is coming from somewhere backed by Iran and other uh, Shia. So the, the, when you mention the Houthis, I, 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 I would have to say that these are muppets mm -hmm. of another uh, threat. Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, Egypt is trying to protect, the safety and the unity of, of Yemen. Same thing also goes in Libya. Mm -hmm. uh, Our Western Gate. I mean, all, all, you know, that's why when you look around, you find that, that what the struggle internally is happening is supported by somewhere else intelligence, somewhere else uh, interventions, that wants this region to be internally in struggle, mm. with the exception of Egypt. And that's why they will keep insisting on trying to break the unity of this republic. And as long as we know that, 
as long as, again, we know that as, as a republic, as po a population, and as government, we will be able to defend our, our unity. But the unfortunately... People, the peoples, sir. Hmm? The peoples. Yeah, I mean, uh, we know. I mean, the, every yeah, individual in Egypt now, through, uh, I heard the uh, interviews that were done by the national TV in the morning with the uh, representative of the population asking them about this, uh, this uh, airplane crash mm -hmm. uh, or missing. Uh, the individual, the average person, was, was knowing exactly what is happening. Mm -hmm. They never mentioned anything about a malfunction of the plane. Mm -hmm. Most of what I heard, they spoke as if they are really political strategists. Mm -hmm. And that's the blessing, that although they claim that we are a large population, we are claiming that we are an illiterate population, that we still understand what's going around us. Sir, is this implemented only on the Egyptians or on the Arab nation in general, the Arab peoples, I mean? I mean, should we depend on the people's awareness? I, I think people are very important. You're talking uh, to Dr. Ibrahim, who is representing the people and the people assembly mm -hmm. uh, or the parliament. But let me just take you back to the question that I wanted really to jump in. Yeah. Uh, but you asked a politician, not a <laughs> diplomat. So allow me just to add to the Houthi uh, issue, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, the uh, uh, talks that is undertaken now in uh, Kuwait uh, under the auspices of the uh, <coughs> UN mm -hmm. uh, Special Representative for uh, Yemen and mm -hmm. also with the guidance uh, of the... The Mauritanian uh, the, diplomat, uh, the Wild Sheikh Ahmed. Wild Sheikh Ahmed and yeah. the Kuwaiti uh, authority uh, as well yeah. or leadership yeah. who are taking care also of this. The Houthi mm -hmm. has to be also part of the solution, mm -hmm. but there is no... Uh, excuse for those who want to confront leg uh, uh, legitimacy. Mm -hmm. The legitimacy has to be observed and the Houthi has to give up their uh, arms. There is no militias that is allowed to carry the uh, control on uh, armed forces has to be sovereign to the nation, legitimate authority. This is, I think, a key uh, to the UN resolution, the GCC uh, uh, plan uh, for pacification of Yemen as well as the very important part that uh, Dr. Ibrahim has mentioned, that we have to observe our region uh, mm -hmm. to our uh, interest, not to the interest of any intruders from abroad. We have to respect also our regional uh, coexistence. Saudi Arabia is a very important uh, part of the peninsula, and the Yemen uh, historical relation uh, with Saudi Arabia has to be respected, the cultural affination of any group is and on top of that sir if you permit me the national security of <coughs> all the red sea states uh, there is a very crucial and critical threat to all of them when what's going on in yemen is what is going on uh, that's why uh, uh, the egyptian uh, uh, troops uh, the naval are forces there. are there to safeguard the uh, uh, passages through uh, By the way, the both of you neglected the Arab League role, if there is a role. No, the Arab League is an important, uh, truly, a framework mm -hmm. for our hopes and dreams. And rest assured that the Arab League will be strong when we are, Arab countries are strong. It is a reflection, a mirror reflection of our unity. If we are united, the Arab League will be strong and united. So please uh, try to avoid as much, although the criticism to the Arab League is out of our hope and sure. dreams of a united Arab region where our regional organization uh, reflects our uh, hopes as Arab uh, <coughs> people. But rest assured that everybody who wants the Arab League uh, to carry its responsibility has to enable the Arab League uh, to do the same. It is our institution. We have to protect. We have to enhance. And we, when we criticize, we have to uh, find alternative and have to be united in our vision. If we want an Arab region uh, stronger, we will get uh, an Arab League uh, stronger as well. Ambassador Dr. Mohammed Hegazi, former Assistant Foreign Minister, Dr. Ibrahim Hegazi, member of our parliament. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much for your input and have a very good night. Thank you. Well, by this we come to the end of this special edition of Windows. On behalf of my dear colleague Dina Hussain, Ashraf Makram, Numeri Shuman, and myself, Nirmina Abdurrahman, many thanks for watching.